Mechanic is one of the most common bands in Identity V. Let's find out why. Hi everyone. Welcome to my Mechanic Guide, where I will teach you all you need to know to get started on Mechanic. First off, we need to understand her external traits. We have Operator, Fragile, Mech Master, and Cowardly. Our first trait is Operator. To put it simply, Operator is about a bot. Mechanic's bot is basically a fifth survivor that can be destroyed with 1.0 damage. When you are controlling the bot or when it's decoding, its energy will decrease. However, its energy will not decrease when it is decoding the gates or healing another survivor. The bot will also not receive any calibrations when healing another survivor, so you don't have to check on it when healing your teammate with it. The bot's energy reduces 33% slower when the mechanic controls it as compared to a normal survivor. And, if you use the bot while you're down or in chair, the energy will reduce faster. Your control over the bot will also be interrupted as soon as another survivor touches the chair. Next, Fragile refers to mechanics very, very slow vaulting speed. She vaults 30% slower than normal survivors. She also slams pallets slower as well. However, her bot vaults and slams pallets faster than her. <laughs> Moving on to Mech Master, Mechanic has a 10% decoding buff, making her tied with Prisoner as the second fastest decoder in the game. Also if you have reached this milestone, there will be bonus tips and info for Mechanic towards the end of the video. So keep watching for more. Mechanic Spot has a 25% decoding buff, which is just 5% slower than Mind's Eye. However if someone else is controlling the bot, there is no 25% buff. Having a mechanic in the team will also boost everyone's decoding speed by 3%. Finally, we have Cowardly. When a survivor receives 1.0 damage, Mechanic's decoding speed is reduced by 35%, and her gate decoding speed is reduced by 15%. This makes her decode at a speed of 71.5%. This debuff can be stacked up twice, making her decode at a speed of 33%, and her gate decoding speed as slow as Acrobat. The mechanic's own health will not affect her decoding speed. And that is all for mechanic's external traits. Now the next question is, what persona should you use as mechanic? Personally, I always carry 3-6 with max snooze. However, you can also carry other personas such as 3-9 or 3-6-9. What persona you use depends on your playstyle and your team combi. I like to max out snooze to buy myself more time to decode with my bot when I'm in chair. I also carry distress to improve team coordination since I mostly play solo queue. And cold is because. I'm blind, I usually carry 3-6 because mechanic has weak kiting potential, and you'll most likely die fast kiting as her even with 3-9. Furthermore, in single rescuer team combis, mechanic acts as the second rescuer. However if the team already has two rescuers, it is best to carry 3-9. This is because there is a higher chance of you having to be first kiter since the hunter would not want to chase a rescuer early game. Though, if one of the two rescuers is a coordinator, I just bring 3-6 as court may bring 3-9. Now let's talk about playstyle. Mechanic has two main playstyles, hiding the bot and keeping the bot. Bruh. I prefer hiding my bot early game and then going to decode my cipher. Oh yeah! Tip, if your controller is vibrating and flashing red it means the hunter is nearby. Now back to playstyle. So I hide my bot, and decode a cipher. You want to avoid decoding with both your main body and the bot until you have two. This is because you want to take full advantage of mechanics early game decoding speed before someone takes a hit. 
Once someone takes a hit, you take your bot out of hiding to decode another cipher so that there will be four ciphers being decoded at once. When decoding with a bot, check on the bot every 2 to 4 seconds to move the bot away from the cipher and decoding again. This is to prevent calibrations. Now for her second playstyle, aka keep the bot. You basically decode till someone gets hit and then take the bot out to decode. I also call this playstyle the kiter playstyle. This is because if you get found, you can body block yourself up to two times with the bot. The two body blocks should be able to ensure you a 60 seconds guide. We're approaching the end of this video and before I end it, I'd like to share some extra tips on mechanic that might just help you in your matches as her. If the hunter kills your bot, your position will be revealed to the hunter. So keep an eye on your bot and transition to a better kiting area if it dies. You know your bot died when its energy reduces by around half. Although, on an extra note, if you swapped out your controller for another item, the hunter will not get a notification when they kill your bot. <laughs> Hunters can hear breathing noises if a survivor is in the locker, but the bot does not create any breathing noises if it's in the locker. So while the hunter will still get denied us, they can't hear any breathing noises. Hmm? Your bot is one hit, so it will most likely fail rescue. You don't want to rescue with it unless everyone else is one hit too, like during detention. The bot spawns behind you, so it can only shield you from attacks from behind. This means it can't shield you from attacks like fireballs or VO nodes. Using the bot to body block is also similar to doing an instant perfume. However, it has to be on time or you'll most likely miss. Another method to body block with the bot is to spawn it at a small doorway to block the hunter's way. Or you can also spawn it between pallets if the hunter is too close, and maybe land even a pallet stun if you're lucky. Finally, before I end this video, do comment hashtag more if you want to see more guides and videos for me in the future. Also feel free to comment anything I may have missed out during the mechanic guide. This is N, signing out.